part three of the second SK Tank Premium Corex Wire 3D Printer build. In this video, I finish the wiring and install clipper on the Big Tree Tech Octopus mainboard. This video deals with mains voltage wiring, which has the potential to kill. This is not for beginners. Please consult a professional before attempting these procedures. In case you weren't aware, I'm building another premium Corex Wire 3D printer, in this case, the second SK tank. In the first two parts, I assembled the stainless steel frame, which was relatively straightforward. And since then, I located a filament holder from the community mods, printed it and fitted it to the machine. Today, we will bring the printer to life, but first, let's answer some of your questions from the last video. Some people wanted to know how on earth I got a Raspberry Pi. It was in fact purchased recently for this build and the shop I got it from in Australia still has some in stock. Even if it sells out, a shout out to Little Bird Australia, who I've been a long time customer of. A very reasonable question was why I was using a clone hot end and extruder on such a premium printer. A reminder that when you order, you can customize the process by leaving out the extruder in hot end and supplying your own. I was happy to start with the cheap cloned products just to get the printer running by following the instructions. And I will upgrade later, get your suggestions in the comments. Finally, will the kinematic bed move during printing and affect print quality? This printer has a kinematic bed, which means it's free to move in the X and Y axis as it expands and that will stop the bed bowing as it heats up. The Ratrig VCore 3 has a very similar system and I've done some insanely fast printing with it to the point where the whole table is shaking yet there's no surface artifacts to indicate the bed might be vibrating. This system wouldn't work on a bed slinger, but on a Core XY it seems just fine. I think it makes start to take a closer look at the specs of the Octopus board. The Octopus is a fully featured main board from Big Tree Tech, and it goes for 53 US dollars on Amazon, or if you shop on AliExpress, 45 or even cheaper with coupons. The main thing that stands out for me is the insane amount of input output ports. We're talking eight stepper motor driver outputs, four heater outputs plus the heated bed, support for six MOSFET G-code controlled fans, NeoPixels BL Touch, a second probe port, Big Tree Tech touchscreens, traditional LCDs, and then dedicated ports for turning on power supplies or power loss detection. The power terminals are big to support high current, and this board supports running Clipper, Marlin, or even RepRap firmware with the Team Gloomy port. As you'd expect, it's 32-bit, with an STM32F processor. We can find out more details by jumping into the documentation on GitHub. We have a pinout diagram that's unfortunately pretty hard to read being all different shades of green, but we do have quite a comprehensive manual going through the features of the main board as well as how to wire up many specific hardware options. One other feature that attracted me to this board is the fact that we can connect a Raspberry Pi directly to the main board, negating the need for buck converters. The 5 volt regulator on board is capable of supplying 8 amps, which is plenty enough to power a Raspberry Pi, as well as other 5 volt accessories such as NeoPixels. As we've come to expect from Big Tree Tech boards, there's extensive jumpers on the board, which support setting the micro stepping of older style stepper motor drivers, or selecting UART or SPI mode for the newer smart TMC drivers. Another really nice feature is that the Octopus supports 5, 12, or 24 volt fans without the need for buck converters which means you can directly plug in a Noctua and simply move the jumper to the appropriate position. You might have also noticed the more expensive Octopus Pro. The key difference here is that it can support 60 volt motor input voltage and with appropriately matched stepper motor drivers, you can supply high voltage and current to your stepper motors if you're chasing speed benchy records, but for the majority of people, the standard edition will be enough. Of course, there are different versions of this board. As the excellent team Gloobie documentation states, the original version has an F446 processor, and that's the one I'm using here, and then a newer version with an F429. If you're going to run RepRap firmware, it's better to have that, but for me here using Clipper, I don't think it made any difference. Many months ago, Big Tree Tech sent me this Octopus board free of charge for the purposes of making a video, and this machine just seemed like an excellent fit. Let's continue with the wiring and adapting it to the Octopus. At the end of the last episode, I had everything in place apart from the main board and that's because the Octopus is not the preferred main board for this machine, and therefore it didn't fit. The intended main board is a Mellow Fly CDY version 2 or 3, or alternatively, a Big Tree Tech GDR. 
All of the wiring that comes with the kit is actually pre-made to suit these boards, but in my case, I needed to do some modification. So to fit the octopus, I did have to do some soldering and crimping to get everything the right length. I'm not gonna cover that here because I've made a dedicated video in the past, which is linked in the description. Instead, what I'll focus on are the parts I designed to adapt the octopus and to assist with cable management, and I'm pretty happy with the end result. The most important part here has the mounting pattern for the mellow flyboard, but then adapts it to suit the octopus with a later revision also mounting the Raspberry Pi nearby. I also positioned a mount for a cooling fan to blow directly over the stepper motor drivers. Fitting this was pretty simple. We simply bolt it where the mellow flyboard would have gone and then bolt the octopus cooling fan and Raspberry Pi on top of that. I could then follow the second documentation to start the wiring. And as their warning, as well as mine at the start of the video states, the mains part of the wiring is dangerous and you should seek professional help before continuing. From the power switch, we have our three wires that go through to the power supply. They're all pre-terminated, so it's just a matter of running them through the supplied slot. And for extra peace of mind, I designed this cover piece so I can't accidentally touch the wiring from the front of the machine. From the power supply, we also need to wire up the mains powered heated bed. The diagram is very clear for this. Our mains wiring from the switch comes through to the mains terminals of the power supply with the live wire daisy chained off into the fuse and then through to the SSR with the other terminal going through to one of the heater bed wires and the second of those bed wires going through to the neutral terminal. Finally, we have a ground wire going to the printer's frame. With the mains wiring done, I then needed to get 24 volts from the power supply to the input of the main board. So the next thing I created was this cable trench design to utilize the bolts already on the back of the printer. It's split into two sections so it could be printed on this machine and it has a lower and upper lid that we'll see in action later. The cutouts in the side are to match locations on the main board and rest of the machine. For instance, this large cutout being for the stepper motor driver ports. And the system passed its first test by passing the 24 volt and heater bed wires. Next up, this simple wiring clip. They're designed to bolt to the spare holes left around the printer frame and flex open just enough to allow some wires to go through so they're not just hanging loose. In conjunction with some braided cable sleeving, I think it gives quite a neat result. The wiring for the hot ending extruder would need a little more attention. To guide it back to the main board, I already designed a 4mm hole in the upper cable trench, just big enough for PTFE tube. Then we have this miniature piece for the other end, which is designed to bolt straight to the second parts and accept the PTFE tube. And here it is complete, with enough slack for all of the wires going to the carriage, a self-closing cable sleeve housing all of the wires and the PTFE tube through its full range of motion, an extra clamp on the frame to constrain this cable, and underneath it feeds into the cable trench. As for where I plugged everything into the octopus, if you're playing along at home, this diagram matches my clipper configuration file. Most of it is straightforward, but here's some things of note. I'm using TMC 2209s, so I have the jumpers for those in place as per the manual. I had to re-pin the end stop connectors to match this mainboard. And in this corner, there's a couple of significant things. I'm using the BL Touch port for the inductive probe with ground, 5 volts and signal. And I'm powering the Raspberry Pi as per the Octopus manual, so 5 volts and ground to the matching pins on the Pi. Although it's possible to also wire the serial connection, I stuck with a short USB cable for this instead. With all of the wiring in place, I could then slide on the lid for the cable trenches, giving me a tidy result that I was definitely happy with. There's a wiring checklist in the second instructions which I followed, and I'd recommend that you follow it too unless you want to see some magic smoke. All that remains is setting up Clipper for the octopus. Setting up Clipper from scratch is something I've covered in detail in previous videos. So again, I'll focus on what was required to adapt the Clipper configuration from Secret to this main board. Step one for me in installing Clipper is putting the web interface on the Pi. Previously, I've done Octoprint and Fluid, so this time I'm gonna try Mainsail. I used the Raspberry Pi imaging tool to flash an SD card image downloaded from the Mainsail GitHub, and I clicked the settings to set up SSH and enter my Wi-Fi network details. And a short while later, Mainsail and Clipper was flashed to the Raspberry Pi SD card. With the SD card in the Pi, I could finally power on the machine for the first time. I located the mainsail installation on my local network, and unsurprisingly I had an error saying that I had no printer configuration. So for my next step, I created a blank one. Secket provides clipper configurations for the Mellow Flyboard as well as the Big Tree Tech GDR. 
So my first step was to switch to the raw version of the file and copy and paste everything there as the basis for my own configuration, except of course all of the pin mappings were incorrect. So I went to the Clipper GitHub and located the generic configuration for the Big Tree Tech Octopus mainboard. From there, it was just a matter of copying and pasting the correct pins for the Octopus to the second configuration. And for any pins that were unclear, I referenced the Big Tree Tech pin diagram from GitHub. The second configuration is set up for TMC 2208s, but I'm using 2209s, so I have to update it to reflect this, as well as setting the correct UART pins. Other changes I made were temporarily commenting out support for resonance compensation and editing the expansion port diagram to match the layout and pin numbers for the Octopus board. All of the config requirements for mainsail were already present in the second config. Before restarting Clipper to make the changes take effect, I jumped into PuTTY and configured the MCU Clipper firmware as per the instructions from the generic Octopus Clipper config. After the file was compiled, I used WinSCP to retrieve it, rename it firmware.bin, put it on the Octopus SD card and reset it to flash the Clipper firmware to the MCU. Initially, Clipper on the Pi wouldn't connect to Clipper on the MCU, so I searched on the Clipper GitHub and found this thread from BogeyF14, who was having the same problem as me and listed the solution as changing the serial port. After making this change in my printer.cfg, I restarted Clipper and everything was finally up and running. If you've followed my Clipper installation videos before, you know the next stage is to work through the Clipper configuration checks page, where we make sure the thermistors and heaters are working as they should be, test the emergency stop, the steppers and end stops are configured correctly, and also PID tune, the hot end and the heated bed, before saving these values. Once I had worked through the list, I was able to home the machine, and from this point I consider it no longer being built, and instead being alive. You'll notice here that the bed is quite crooked, so this provides a perfect chance to show off Clipper's Z-Tilt compensation, which is already set up in the second firmware. The three bed mounting points are specified in the firmware, as well as three probing points which correspond. The firmware will probe each of these locations and calculate the difference in height before applying a fix. Watching the fix happen in real time is my favourite part, and it should get the bed completely parallel to the XY plane of motion. I know that some people will be disappointed that I haven't featured any printing in this video, but I'm trying to fight my own impatience and take my time getting the small details right, and I'll bring you lots of printing in the next instalment. Everything custom you've seen in this video is available open source and free. Be it the printed parts, the wiring diagram, or the clipper configuration, please check the links in the description. That's going to bring this instalment to a close. Get your questions in the comments for the final video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printer building. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.